After three days and 1,500 miles of driving, we have finally made it to Hungary, and this means we are finally getting out into the field. Weeks of practice and preparation have finally led to today. Starting with our equipment selection and setup, a visit to WMS Firearms Training, and onto the shooting cinema at the Blaser and Sauer factory. Steve waits patiently as I gather and prepare my equipment. I typically use the same equipment for most hunting activities, just switching out the barrel of my Sauer 404 to the appropriate calibre and changing the scope depending on the species. Over the years I've developed a well-rehearsed system when getting my gear together, which means I rarely leave any important items of equipment behind. Steve's setup is very similar to mine, although he prefers his own rifle, backpack and shooting sticks. Once again, it's a finely honed ritual that's been developed over time. One of the things we've learnt over many years of hunting travel is that it's essential to keep things organised in the truck. Everything has its place and must be returned once we've finished with it. With two hunters and two cameramen, things can get very messy very quickly. Before we begin our stalk, it's important to test fire our rifles to ensure they're still on zero following a lengthy journey. A slight shift on my sticks sees the shot go a little high. High a little right, inch high. But it's pretty much bang on line. Perfect. Fire in. No such trouble for Stephen, who is bang on the money. I think that's dead centre. So first things first, need to check the zero. So off my knees here, we're about two inches high and about an inch out to the right. So that was probably due to a little bit of shift as I'm on the sticks, but to be honest with you, I'm quite happy at that. Once we stand up and we get shooting over 100, 150 yards, and then hopefully that'll come back down onto its aim point. But um, yep, so far, happy with that, ready to go. So just before we go out, we've got to check the zeros. That's my shot there, just below bull, and I'm a little bit off to the right as well. Quite happy with that, 100 yards, stood off sticks. That'll do me, good to go. Go and find some wild boar. It's now time for us both to depart and begin our hunts. Steve and I will be hunting in different areas and we'll be looking for different quarry. I'd like to take a fallow doe for meat and Steve is looking for a mouflon ram or wild boar. We've arrived to where we're going to go stalking. The test shot was absolutely fine. The rifles have travelled all the way over from England to Hungary. Spot on, no problems whatsoever. And we're going to go and have a walk and a stalk down in this wood here. Now, we'll get on with it and see what we can see. reached the high seat and we're overlooking where the pigs have been feeding. Today I'm using my walk endurance 10 by 56 binos. These are my go-to binos. I've used these in Alaska and hunting in the UK and across Europe. Absolutely fantastic binos. Love them to bits. I've got my trusty old Blaza R8 professional success in 300 wind mag this time and on top I've got my Hawk Endurance 30 1 to 6 by 24 scope. So now it's just a waiting game. We're going to sit here and hopefully the pigs will come out and feed. You can see where they've been rooting on the ground in front. It's all churned up. Looks pretty much like a ploughed field. So hopefully we'll get lucky and be able to bag a nice Kyler.
So it's a beautiful sunny afternoon uh, here in early February in Hungary and we're out stalking. Now we're here for a couple of days driven wild boar hunting tomorrow and the day after but because we stopped off early thought we'd come and have a bit of a wander around in this stunningly beautiful Hungarian countryside. This area of Europe is very, very game rich. Great management practices, beautiful woodlands, lots of arable, so plenty of food for wild game to feed on. It's a bit warm this afternoon. I wasn't quite expecting this temperature. It's about six or seven degrees, so my deer hunter mouflon winter jacket, probably a bit tough for this hill climbing and wandering, but it's a fabulous afternoon. Looking forward to seeing what we're gonna see. And you never know, something appropriate might step out. So looking forward to it. At this time of year, the effectiveness of Realtree Max 5 camo is demonstrated perfectly, blending seamlessly against the dull yellows and browns of the decaying vegetation. This rich Hungarian countryside is perfect for supporting healthy populations of wild game. A sounder of wild boar steps out in front of us, an old sow staring curiously at us before moving on, the younger Frieslinger disappearing behind it into the undergrowth. It's great to see so many animals this early into a stalk, and it's also good news for our driven hunt tomorrow. Steve, however, is not faring so well. OK, we've been sat in the seat now for about an hour, an hour and ten minutes. Not seeing anything apart from the yellow hammers, the jays, the buzzards, the ravens. There's been loads of wildlife activity. But at the minute we've not seen any pigs at all. Our stalker seems to think that if we stop here we're in with a good chance. So we'll just wait it out and see how we're going on. The temperature's starting to drop, so it's all right. I'm glad I've got my mouflon jacket on now. I thought it was going to be a bit hot earlier, but it's keeping me nice and toasty at the minute. We approach a clearing, pausing occasionally to glass the area, hoping to spot any game that may be lurking in the shadows. We decide to wait a while in the high seat. We've covered quite a lot of ground and the game will be moving around. Sometimes it's best to let things around you settle and allow the opportunity for animals to appear. But whilst I've been enjoying the leisurely stroll in the countryside, Steve does not seem to be enjoying his very static hunting experience. We've been sat now nearly five and a half hours. The light is just starting to drop. You can see the cars in the very far distance. The headlights are starting to twinkle at us. So, then if it's going to show itself, I reckon it's going to be in the next half hour. So, fingers crossed. Positive thinking, perhaps, but he doesn't seem all that confident. As the light begins to fade, another sounder of boar crosses the field at pace. They are skylined on the ridge, not offering a safe shot, but we're seeing plenty of animals. We hear some movement in the plantation to our right and decide to investigate on foot. These rows of trees offer a very narrow arc of fire so I deploy my rifle from the Vaughan Lynx backpack, ready to take the shot. There's plenty of fresh sign, but also plenty of places to hide. As the light begins to fade, more game starts to emerge from the cover. We spot two rodo feeding up ahead, but unfortunately they're not on the tableau tonight. It's a shame as they would make perfect animals for meat, but still, it's wonderful just to observe such beautiful creatures. As the light closes in around us, an army of wild boar emerges from the surrounding forests. This is one of the areas we'll be hunting with the team tomorrow, so I'm not going to ruin the day by disturbing the pigs now. But this is a very promising sign for the driven days to come. Steve, on the other hand, is philosophical about his comparatively quiet evening. 
Well, that's it. As you can see, night is upon us. We haven't seen anything tonight. We've just had bad luck. Hopefully, we end up better luck in the other spot. But for now, I reckon that's about it. And better luck next time. In much the same way we have a system when the gear comes out, so do we have a system to get everything back in again. Gear goes away, coffee comes out, and we prepare to share our experiences of the day. Say hey then mate, how's your evening been? Quiet, to say the least, and I think we were in the wrong place completely. There was a bit of sign and slots when we were walking to the high seat, but we walked straight into the high seat and we've sat there ever since we went out really. We yeah. didn't do any stalking whatsoever. We're just in the wrong place, I think. Never saw a thing. <laughs> well, as it happens, I think we might have been in the right place, <laughs> um, but just didn't get the opportunity we were looking for. Had a little bit of a stalk around, a lot of sign out there, walked through a plantation, and lots of different types of slots as well. There are clearly a lot of pigs in there, Roe deer slots, fallow deer slots. So I was pretty sure that we were going to bump into something, but as it happened, we just didn't get enough time or the right shot. The problem with stalking through plantations is the bushes can be quite thick together. There's a lot of small branches. There's a lot of potential obstacles in the way of a clear shot. Now I could definitely hear a lot of pigs in the undergrowth. Some at some distance, kind of snorting and growling. We came across a couple of sounders with two sows and a load of freshling. So there's a healthy population of game here. Of course, we were looking for something a little bit more mature. So we continued on. But, you know, nice woods, so we kind of stalked around, back down a ride, so pretty high banks on both sides, so nice safe shots. And then another sounder of wild boar came in front of us, literally 30 yards away. And then just a couple of freshling just stood there, looked at us, and then skipped off. But once again, you know, that's not quite what we were looking for at that no. time of the afternoon. So we made our way up through, up into a high seat that was overlooking quite a wide area of ground, plenty of boar damage there as well. So they've clearly been rooting around and snorting around in there. We saw some a sounder cross, once again, two females, four or five freshling disappeared off into the wood, sat there for a little while and then could hear some noise, some commotion in the plantation. Got down, went to have a look, but once again, just too thick to be able to take yeah, a shot it, or, yeah. or, or to be able to see. This is the sort of environment I really do think that having a thermal wood give you a much better idea of what's in there because sometimes you just got a little narrow window and you need to be ready. And half the time the pigs have come across, they're in the window, before you can get your rifle up, they're gone they're again. Gone again yeah. You need to see them on the way in and then be ready for them. But as the light started to fade, came down, walked across an open meadow, and lo and behold, there's pigs everywhere. But it's just that sort of time, really, really last knockings. Had we have probably had a little bit more light in the sky, it'd been a brighter day, then it may be um, we, we could have had a shot, but um, unfortunately not. But one thing's for sure with our driven wild boar hunt tomorrow, I have no doubt there's gonna be plenty of pigs here. I hope so. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm sorry it hasn't gone as well for you as it has for us. That's hunting, right? You can't have everything all of the time, otherwise there'd be no point in doing it, yeah. would there? But the great thing is we managed to, yep. you know the Jet Boyle, Simo, here, managed to get ourselves a little latte. And job done. Relax and enjoy yourself. Yeah. So it's still pretty early in the evening, it's about half past six in the evening here, still quite dark. But head off to the lodge, meet up with the rest of the guys, have a few beers, tell a few tall stories and early to bed maybe? Well, I don't know about that. And we'll see how we get on. <laughs> But anyway, mate, no worries. Well, wide man style. Sorry, sorry it didn't work out for you, but no so worries, mate. enjoy your coffee. Oh, bloody hot, no. Oh, yeah, that's, that's how we like it.